Two years in the making, over 600 different tests, and now we have it, Gap Filla. <laughs> Gap Filla is a very thick emulsion. It's non-toxic, sandable, flexible, sticks well, fast drying, little shrinkage, easy to apply, no running, holds shape very, very well, easy to feather the edges when you're sanding it. It's good for gap filling, transitions, filling low spots, shaping, and stenciling. Okay, I have a jar of gap filler right here. It is not one of the official jars. All the good jars uh, sold out, and so we had to replenish the store with all the great stock, but this is the original good stuff. I'm gonna open this up. Uh, shelf life on this, it's probably gonna go a good year. So far, uh, we're still running tests on this, and it's, it's made it almost up to a year so far, and it's still going good, so I assume it's gonna make it a year. Uh, of course, at any time, if it starts to dry out a little bit, just add a little bit of water, not much, and then stir it around, and it should revive it. When you first get the jar, what you want to do is stir it around to degas it. There's going to be some gas uh, pockets in there uh, from the production. And so if you take a stick, this is a chopstick, and then I'm just going to work it aggressively in a little circular manner and it's going to get rid of a lot of the gas has a very fun consistency to it um, it also has a slight ammonia smell for those who love that ammonia smell you're going to love this okay as you degas it uh, the level will drop just a little bit Wow, you can see how thick this is, and it just holds right there. In fact, if I were to put this to the side, it will dry just like that. Every little detail holds perfectly. I like using a palette knife to spread this stuff. Let's see, on the label, it will say also don't freeze. Uh, that's mainly for storage. Uh, if it, if it freezes for a few days, uh, probably not going to be an issue. It does tend to thicken up just a little bit, uh, as if it weren't thick enough already, but it will thicken up just a little bit if it freezes. If it freezes for a very long time and gets too thick, you may have to add a little bit of water to it. Okay, I'm going to do a little demonstration on how gap filler works on transitions. That's where one plane of the foam meets another plane of the foam and this happens a lot when you're building costumes. So I am going to take uh, my palette knife, grab a little bit right here, and I'm just gonna apply it in there in a semi-messy way. And then I'm gonna come back and smooth it out. So I'm just gonna glob it in there. Now, of course, I'm using a lot more than what I need, but uh, any excess will go right back into the jar, so I'm not gonna waste any. I'm going to take my palette knife, start right here, and just in one swipe, pull it this way, and then I can come back in and clean up these edges. So it's going to leave a little trail of residue behind, but there's a little gap between the Gapzilla and the leftover Gapzilla, and I can Gapzilla. Been watching too many Godzilla movies, so uh, Gapzilla now has become Gapzilla. And I'm going to do this to the other side too. There we go. I may make another pass over there. I think I can get it a little bit cleaner. The, the more you can clean this up, the less you have to sand. And so now we just have this wonderful, beautiful transition. And if I even want to uh, smooth that out more, I can. Uh, wet my finger and just do a quick wipe that way just like what you would with caulk and it works great. Sometimes uh, edges get a little wonky, a bad cut, or it needs to be rounded somehow. Something always goes wrong with edges. 
Uh, there was some unevenness here I filled in the other day, so I am able to sand that off and show you that. But if I were going to fill an edge, I can take some of this and just put a little on there, work it really good, make sure it's sticking in there. Uh, and anytime you're putting this on, of course, uh, you want the foam to be clean, oil free, all that kind of stuff. You don't want to start putting uh, paint or filler when there's dirt all over your foam. And that will make it stick better if it is clean. Okay, so I have a nice good thin coat over there. And now I can just run my knife really quickly, just like that. Come in on the edge, scrape it, scrape the other side, and then let that dry. That should be ready to sand in under an hour. Another good use for gap villa are low spots. So right here, uh, I've already done it. This is a green tinted gap villa. Uh, during the testing stage, we created different colors. But this was a low spot, and uh, so I put some gap filla in there, and then I took a piece of plastic and just easily went over it, and the plastic curved to the general curve of the foam and filled that in, so now uh, I don't have a dip there anymore. And that is nice, especially on helmets and stuff, when you're trying to create a nice round effect and you have a little wobble in the foam. Uh, it can fill in really nicely. Stenciling. Uh, this is something I've done on costumes before where I take a stencil and then I apply a product and this product works great for stenciling. So I am going to choose, oh, maybe this. Uh, here are some angel wings that I did uh, and they turned out really nice. The details are nice and sharp. Let me get some scrap foam. Here's some scrap foam right there. Go ahead and put a stencil on there. Uh, this is a polypropylene stencil, which means it's a type of plastic where it's a lot easier to clean up later. And once you use the stencil, you'll want to put it in water right away because it does dry fairly quick. I'm going to take a little bit of the gap filler and just put it down there and just rub it right across. Maybe go frontward and backward on it. There we go. Pull it up like this. And then we have some great stenciling done. Uh, once it dries, uh, then a quick light sanding. And then once you put your patina on it, then you have this wonderful embossed look uh, for decorative uh, edges, trims, gauntlets, anything like that. Pretty awesome, huh? You can also create textures with this, although I haven't figured out how to do that yet. But it's so thick, you can put it on and layer it up. So if I get a big glob of gap filler and just leave it right there, it will stay just like that and dry. And so all the details that you see right there will stay right there. So I can create, if I want to, any type of texture. I can come in here with a spackle looking texture and put a thin coat there. I can come back in with a paper towel and create a very rough texture that way. I can come back in with my finger, a little water, do a little rub back. Maybe texture it up some more, get a really good organic look. It kind of looks like the scale of a sea creature or something. But, uh, and then of course, once it dry, it's very flexible. And so you would probably just do a quick spray seal over it with rubber or whatever top coat you would like to do. And, and it's awesome. Okay, let's talk about the flexibility of Gap Villa. And here is a little uh, U-shape um, trough looking, I don't know what else it is. 
it was just some pieces I glued together for an experiment. So, uh, but it has the gap filler on it and it twists. And uh, this was done, let me look at the date right here. This was done eight months ago. So after eight months, it's still very flexible. Flexible twisting this way and this way. Uh, let's see, I did this a couple months ago and it's still pretty flexible too. And how long will it stay flexible? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we've uh, done some tests on it, some swatches about a year ago, and it still seems to be bending pretty good. Uh, I imagine eventually it'll stop uh, flexing like all things do. Even rubber will start to break down and crystallize. Um, I know that if you paint a top coat on it and stuff, it'll keep it going longer, the flexibility. It holds the moisture in. So the flexibility is, is pretty darn good. I am going to do some sanding. So this had some gap fill up put on it yesterday and it's dry and I'm just gonna work on the edge and show you how easy it is to sand. Uh, I got a sanding stick here. Let me tilt this up. Uh, on my sanding stick, I have uh, two different grits. This is a 60 on one side and a 120 on the other side. And I am just gonna start with the 60 grit just to knock off the tops really quick. And then I'm gonna flip it over to the 120. Okay, now we have a pretty decent edge. I can get it even finer. I can use um, these sanding pads, uh, pads, which usually run between a 220 grit and a 120, depending on which pad it is. And I love these because they sand it so quick. And the edges are very nice. So there's that. Um, another thing that you can do is wet sand. So uh, I have a little transition right here that uh, I can take some um, 3M 320 grit, and I love this uh, flexible sandpaper that they have. It's really nice, and so I'm just gonna fold it over, uh, dip it in some water, and then right away, I can do some wet sanding. The emulsion holds up really good, and it eats into that very quickly. And that's the nice thing about wet sanding, then wipe it back. And that is very, very smooth. Let's talk about feathering edges. So with fillers, uh, let's say like Quick Seal, um, if I were to put this on an edge to try to fill in some gaps there, and as I'm sanding the edge of the Quick Seal, it starts to peel up like a rubbery layer and it doesn't stick well enough to the foam and and so you have this weird edge that you can't get rid of well this is designed to stick really good to the foam and to sand and so you can feather off the uh, the gap filla and it should seamlessly flow right into your EVA foam and so if I were to take an edge like this and grab my sanding pad and right there is where there's an edge but as soon as I get out here it feathers off very nicely uh, I can even do a wet sand on it I wonder if I can do a wet sand with something this heavy of a grit okay I got a little water here I can actually just put some on there, rub it in just like that. And I'm gonna take this sanding pad, see if I can get that to sand even quicker. Yeah, it's creating a, a nice film. And so you know it's cutting into that. Really nice. Look how aggressive I can get with this uh, 120 grit. And then just a wipe back. And that is super smooth. That transition is just awesome. So 
great on feathering transitions. Okay, all of our products work well with one another. Uh, you can layer them up and they stick uh, very nicely one to another. So if I put down some gap filler, I can come back on top of it uh, with the prime or the rapid fill for the rest of the foam, or I can go straight to a fine finish. Let's talk about the drying time. Uh, on the jar it says anywhere from 1 to 24 hours. It will dry quicker than that if you put a very thin coat over something. I've had this stuff dry as quick as 15 minutes uh, with a hair dryer. Uh, how does it compare to like a PVA type of filler? Uh, it's going to be four to eight times faster in drying. Uh, so compared to a quick seal uh, uh, on a trial test that I ran, it was probably five to six times faster than a thick coat of quick seal. And so that's pretty good. You can keep production going rather fast. If you build it up super thick, uh, like on an edge or something, you probably want to let it dry overnight. If you're creating massive textures, uh, you probably want to let it set up for a good 24 hours. Okay, now where can you buy this stuff at? Well, see the links below this video, and I'll have them on there. Okay, that's it for my little demo and talk about Gap Villa. Uh, many cosplayers are already starting to use it and they are loving it so we are very excited my son and I we make this uh, we're real excited about this new product and we hope you give it a try ah!